Now, for thousands of rail users, the Bramup Tunnel is nothing more than the dark bit of the journey between Leeds and Harrogate. But as Lucy Hester found out, it's a Victorian relic with a fascinating story. From Harrogate to Leeds, it's a half-hour rail journey. But this train line's got an astonishing story hidden in its past. The railway line from Leeds to Harrogate's always been much more than just a commuter route. It's an amazing engineering achievement, as well as a journey through some spectacular countryside. Today, we're travelling 150 years into the past, and we're going to uncover the story of just how this railway line was built. Next to the road from Leeds to Otley is the top of an air shaft. Nearby is a surveyor's tower. There are traces of a 19th century masterpiece dug 300 feet into the ground below. The Bramope Tunnel was built by an army of navvies. It was drafty, dirty, dark, damp. Now, when you think that they were actually digging it out and behind every shovelful, they didn't know what they were going to find, be it water, subsidence, it must have been horrendous for them. Many were killed before work was complete. Some believe they still haunt the tunnel where they died. I've heard sounds which I couldn't, you know, decipher, but some lads said they'd actually heard voices. In the 1840s, railways were a license to print money. The Leeds to Harrogate line was a crucial link between Newcastle and the South, and competition between railway companies was cutthroat. South of Harrogate, the line crosses two valleys, then cuts into a hill at Bramope. Well, it was extremely difficult to build the line. Other railway companies didn't build it because they thought it couldn't be done. In the tunnel, the conditions would be very difficult because they wouldn't have electric lights and it would be very cold, especially in winter. The Bramope Tunnel was a massive undertaking, more than two miles long. The entire railway, the final uh, sum for it was 2.3 million uh, in the mid 19th century. And of that sum, 500,000 pounds or around about a fifth uh, was taken up by the tunnel itself. In the woods below Bramop, the tunnel's northern gateway is like an abandoned castle, empty and neglected. This is the entrance to the Bramhope Tunnel and it's quite incredible to think that today it's almost completely forgotten. In its time, this was a showpiece of Victorian architecture, purpose-built to reflect the tremendous feat of engineering that was the Leeds to Harrogate line. Now, the inside of the tower is really quite remarkable. Of course, today it's very run down and it's been badly vandalised, but it's thought that this is where the workers used to stay and you can see where the floor and the ceiling were above me and the fireplace too, with the remnants of a fire still there. This place really was built to impress and the attention to detail is second to none. A large coat of arms sits very proudly on the battlements and a huge stone head gazes down on travellers as they enter the mouth of the tunnel. When Malcolm Debenham repaired the tunnel, he found relics left by the navvies more than a century before. Little iron candle holders that were practically rusted away, you know, that they'd left behind. I mean, imagine working with candlelight. I mean, we only had tilly lamps at the time and the odd, and periodically we just, just to get that impression, we put candles as they would have done. <laughs> but we, we, again, like I say, you couldn't imagine what them lads went through. For the navvies, railway building was a dangerous way of life. It's been calculated that soldiers at Waterloo had a better chance of surviving. One section of the Bramope Tunnel was called the Slaughterhouse. Officially, 23 men are known to have died. Many more were severely injured. By any standard, it was a heavy price to pay. Hidden away in a corner of a churchyard in Otley is a very elaborate memorial to the navvies who died building the Leeds to Harrogate Railway. The monument was built as a replica of the entrance to the Bramhope Tunnel, but it doesn't tell the whole story. We found evidence that many more men died than the 23 that are remembered here. 
only one navvy has a marked grave, James Myers, who is buried at Yeadon High Street. He died at the age of 22, killed by a falling boulder. Inside Out has obtained many of the navvy's death certificates. They paint a tragic picture of lives lost as the project went behind schedule and over budget. Historians accept the official figure of 23 deaths must be too low. The figure may be twice as high. The tunnel took three years to build. 23 died just in 1847. There's obviously going to be more in, in the other years. Many navvies died of disease. Few had anyone to record or mourn their deaths. Some drowned when water flooded the tunnel. I think they pumped out of it 1.5 billion gallons of water. The moor above it acts as a sort of gathering ground and watershed for all the rain and several springs and streams and so on that start on the moor. This was constantly uh, suffusing into the um, workings there. North of the tunnel entrance, two more workers died when an arch collapsed on the viaduct over the river wharf. Like other casualties, they were buried quickly in the nearest convenient place. The fields are peaceful now, but 150 years ago, they were home to a shanty town of workers and their families. It was Yorkshire's answer to the Wild West. At Wesco Hill near Wheaton, a man died during a drunken riot. Extra police patrolled the area armed with cutlasses, and navvies blew their money on illegally brewed alcohol. Violence became a way of life. A century and a half later, the ghosts of dead navvies are still said to haunt the tunnel. It's an eerie, eerie place. Someone said they'd actually heard voices. I have heard tappings that I couldn't, you know, account for. When Malcolm Debenham was carrying out repair work in the tunnel, another worker told him of strange apparitions. He said he's seen the lamps, heard voices coming down the track, and then he's seen the lamps swinging as though chaps were carrying them. And then within a hundred yards of where he was stood, the lamps have just disappeared and gone. I mean, they couldn't have gone anywhere. They had to pass him, you know, if there'd have been genuine folk. But as he said, those lamps just disappeared. Ghosts or not, the navvies left a lasting legacy, the completed railway line. It's a remarkable achievement, I think, when you think that the many, many big engineering monuments that have taken place on that line that have been put up there uh, were done simply by sheer physical effort. 